We are here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Andrea Kreps, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2015 for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Uh, we're glad to have you. Tell us about yourself. Tell us uh, the name of your school and, and tell us what you teach. Okay. Um, I teach first grade at Russell Ranch Elementary School in the Folsom Cordova Unified School District and I've been teaching for 11 years now. Uh, teaching is something I love. It's my passion I, and, and, and first grade is so exciting because I get to celebrate a lot of my students firsts. Mm -hmm. First tooth, first time riding a bike, first time tying a shoe, so I really enjoy that part of it. Now Russell Ranch Elementary, explain uh, for people why it's different from other schools. Okay, we're, I think for several reasons. We have um, an, a, a housing part of our campus that houses students with autism and they are mainstreamed or integrated into the general education classrooms as needed, um, whatever is the best fit for them. And many of them are in our general education classrooms or start out maybe integrating in a couple of times throughout the day and by third or fourth grade are mainstreamed full day, which is really exciting. And then we just started piloting Project Lead the Way, which is a STEM program last year and we'll be implementing that school-wide this year. So it's very exciting, mm -hmm. <laughs> lots of new things. So let's talk about uh, the first part about the, the mainstreaming of the students. Okay. Um, explain what kind of a challenge it is, one, for the teacher Mm -hmm. and two for the other students. Okay, well we have a really supportive uh, special education staff and, and they work with us tirelessly on providing us with strategies and supports for the students, um, strategies that they use in their classrooms and then how we can support that when they come to our classrooms. And most of the time, for at least in first grade, it starts out with more of the social aspects, so they'll come for more of the social time, like a read aloud and a writer's workshop time, or they'll come for math when we're doing math stations, some sort of hands-on. Um, it can be challenging um, just in the sense of that it's a new thing and it, it sort of um, at first isn't part of the routine, but once the students know that it's that time of day, they look forward to it, they're excited, they, they like to see their peers and they find each other at recess afterwards and play. And so um, really I think the most challenging part is just um, figuring out how that's all gonna work out and what are the best times instructionally, not anything with the students, so. And for those students who are mainstream, uh, kind of explain how you see the changes in them from you know the first Mm -hmm. from that first day until the time that they're there all day. Just um, really with how it opens up sort of their world. It's not so small anymore. It gets a lot larger and, and they really feel like they're part of that community and they have more friends in other classes. We do a lot of rotations at our school, so students aren't with one teacher all day. Um, we do a lot of instructional grouping, and so they meet all different um, students, not just ones in some class. and. I think they're just they're so excited and happy to come in and, and it's their little break too away from their time and the ones that are integrated in full day you often don't know which students they are which is amazing. It's very gratifying yes, when you see Yes it that. is and the special education teachers work so hard and they are you know a lot of times in the shadows and they shouldn't be they're so um, I, I don't know how they do it they're so inspiring they're just so positive. Now you say you've been teaching for 11 years yes. or at that school for 11 no, years? No, I've been teaching for 11 years. Okay, so, so uh, in that amount of time, what kind of big changes have you seen in education? I've seen big changes in the class sizes, starting off with smaller class sizes and then increasing. Um, but as far as curriculum and education goes, I think preparing students for the 21st century and getting them to be more, um, looking at things more globally and global, preparing them for global citizenship and the STEM um, the STEM technology, integration of technology in general, um, starting off with just one, you know, old Mac and now having new iPads and tablets and Chromebooks, so. Now you were saying that, that your school is doing some STEM yes. as well. Explain how that's going to work. Okay, so it really is designed to be integrated. It's not kind of supposed to be its own separate um, entity. So it just incorporates science, technology, engineering, and math. But they do that through read alouds with language arts. So the students are um, read, in, in first grade they were read a story and the 
group of children were hiking and they decided to split up and take two different trails back to camp. And one trail ended up not going all the way through. And so the students were then posed with the problem. If you're in this group and you have only these items in your backpack, a flashlight, a bandana, um, a metal water bottle, <laughs> how can you communicate across distance using light or sound? And so then they um, brainstormed with their groups and they designed um, a device and they had to sketch it out and label it and then put it together and then test it. And so it's getting them to use sort of real world problems, but applying strategies from science, technology, um, math, things they're learning and, and doing that in a more project based design and, and, so a, and a real infusion of critical thinking absolutely yeah. so they're not just filling in a missing blank number or a missing word they're having to really critically think about the problem and go through all the design process and evaluate it and reflect on what worked why did it work okay what didn't work how can I fix it and so yeah and just encouraging them to be deeper thinkers well, that'll be exciting to see how that progresses absolutely definitely yes so why did you become a teacher? What what brought you to the profession? Was it, were you one of those you know, when you were five you wanted to be a teacher? No, I wasn't. I, I wish I could say that. Um, I, education in my family is is very um, you know long running. I guess my grandmother was a teacher for thirty plus years, and my other grandmother was a teacher for thirty plus years. So I didn't initially grow up thinking I, I want to be a teacher, but I knew that having a large family and, and having to teach my younger brothers and sisters and cousins things, that I loved that aspect of it. I loved teaching them and it was very gratifying to show them something and have them go, oh yeah, I could do this, I get this. And then um, I lifeguarded for a little bit as um, a high school student and in college and taught swimming lessons. And that's really where I think my first like interest in it kind of spurred and then going through the child development program at Sacramento State University was where I really like fell in love with teaching because I got to apply what I was learning in the classroom um, out in the real world with students and so then from there I just said So, so it wasn't like you knew from an early age you just kind of gravitated there yes. naturally. Yes, and I just I love learning myself and I, I really enjoy that process and so trying to make it enjoyable for others is what sort of inspires me because it should never, I'm like I always say I'm doing something wrong if my six-year-old students don't want to come to school or they're not excited to come to school because they're naturally curious and so if I'm not fostering that then I'm doing something wrong. And is I'm that so what motivates sure. you as a teacher? Yes. Is just th that constant spark from the students? Absolutely. Yes. They're curious. They're, did you know? And how come? And, you know, so getting them to, uh, to ex explore that more. I think that's something my parents did for me. They didn't just tell me the answers. They said, well, what do you think? Or how could we figure this out? So that's something that stuck with me. And I try to give to them too, like have them think about it more and just. So uh, what are your thoughts on being a Teacher of the Year? What does that mean to you? Oh my gosh, it, it's still surreal. I still sometimes pinch myself and go, is this really happening? But it's such a huge honor. I know well, because there are so many dedicated, passionate teachers out there who um, deserve this recognition and award too. So just to be considered a candidate for that is something that is very, very, um, it's, you know, it's a shock still. Um, I'm. I'm still kind of reeling, but it's really exciting. It's a really exciting time. I think that as a candidate, it's a great time to share the successes and the positive aspects about education today. Sometimes we hear so much of what's not working that it's nice to, to share what is and to be a part of that. And it's an opportunity to really uh, learn from other teachers as well. Absolutely, yeah. that's I think the most exciting part for me is to talk to them and meet them and you know find out absolutely what what they're going through too. So. Well, good. Well, congratulations Thank to you. you. We're glad to have it. you with us. Thank you. We've been speaking with Andrea Kreps, who is the Teacher of the Year Thank for you. the Folsom Cordova Unified yes. School District. Congratulations. Thank and thanks you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me.